Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil, Basil Chapman here. here. A little technical problem. Hope everything's working. Dow's up 135 at 34,987. I'm going to use one hand here. Give me a second here. Uh, let me go. S&P at this particular point is up $19 at 45.17. Very strong leg B. QQQ, NDX 100, also leg B in the daily chart, 376, up $1.69, IWM, the Russell 2000, strong leg A, the Dow we said was in leg A, we've got the gold. Now, this is going to be fascinating, especially today, of course, you've got Tom O'Brien's webinar coming up on the gold, uh, on his gold uh, newsletter, and we're looking at right at the 200 period exponential moving average up 9.7 at 1974. So there are a couple of things we'll do to right here because it's really important with this breakout in gold. Uh, we're looking at the possibility that you've got a little sweet spot here where you've got potentially, and I'll go to the bonds right now, where the bond, the yields are starting to come down a little bit. I say a little bit because uh, we've been here, uh, we're not even where we were uh, two weeks ago, so there's a, there's a nice bounce going on. have to treat it as a bounce because the weight of evidence of that uh, weekly chart, the right uh, part of the arch formation coming down, says the MACD's weak, the Castix only at 15%, the, red, the 9 is way under the 14, so I, I have to say that yields, the story's not finished there. Now let's go to silver, and this is going to be fascinating because silver was leading gold. Then gold usually catches up. Then as the two of them, uh, as the two of them kind of coordinate coming to new recovery highs, that's where you get some kind of a pullback first in silver and then in gold. We'll see if that happens now, but so far this is really a good. Look at this one-to-one, -one, the Chapman Wave falling axe formation from that peak D high made in the GD. This is a silver chart way back uh, on the, 26th, uh, on the 20th of July, comes down with almost a one-to-one -one left side, right side price time match. It holds nicely, has a big spike up, breaks that trend line, the falling axe trend line. That's a, uh, just a declining cone. And then there's a potential one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. And that says that a test of that previous high close to the 2561 level is where the measurement comes in. But the actual high was 2582. So what we're looking at here is that uh, the MACD is strong. The 9 is way over the 14. Price is holding well. Stochastic's flat at 92%. I still like silver very much. Uh, we're looking at uh, crude oil. Crude oil has also held very nicely in this cup formation. It did go to a sell mode. Now it's kind of right in between everything because it's had a, uh, the 9 period moving average has crossed positive again. And that just says, don't, don't, don't rule me out. I've still got some strength here, even though the technicals are weakening. But most importantly, the price is the arbiter of the trend. The price is we've got a bit of a cup formation here trying to get back to the previous high. Not sure if it will. Looking at high-grade copper, that's kind of a benchmark of certain things. It's just kind of up a fraction at 3.84. And now we're going to look at, uh, I want to, I'm going to do this again, TLT. So this is the bond. So if, in fact, we're going to have, if, if the low that we made in the, in the S&P and the Dow just the other day, let me go to the S&P because that's the, the broader index, in the S&P, back on August the, was that the 18th? Yeah, August the 18th at 4335.31 um, is the low and not a low. Then what we need to see is any pullback holds very well halfway into this big uh, Maraboso candle that we had yesterday, uh, 45, 4465, let's call it 40, yeah, 45. 44.65. That's kind of the, the midpoint that I'd be looking at over the next, going into the first week of September. 
that's not this is the partial week coming up but the first week is the real uh, full week is next week so we'll see because if this holds very well <coughs> excuse me with all the things that are going on right now with the VIX index have a look at this VIX index VIX .X, there we go Pulling back so sharply, under 15, is at 14.13. If you look at the week here, look how many red candles have been here with a couple of greens. And this volatility index, if you look at the weekly chart, um, oh, sorry, if you look at the monthly chart, this horizontal line that I drew in that goes back forever is at 14. And we're right now at 14.12. So what it's saying is that um, there is there is selling coming into the VIX index and buying coming into the markets. How it holds is going to be really important. And just as we're about to wrap up this section, segment, uh, let me just update this chart. So isn't this interesting? I did that way, way back. I can't even remember, but it was a, maybe even three weeks ago. It could even be more than that. I drew in this horizontal line. And I said 4530 is going to be a number that we've just got to keep in mind. It's a horizontal level. Uh, fund managers or at least uh, futures and, and uh, 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 hedge funds are going to be looking that l at that level because it's representative of a particular point that started the resistance and then we broke down from that level. Now we're coming back to it. How we deal with this level at 40, uh, on the S&P mini, uh, 45.30 is going to be very important. We're making the cup formation to test it. How we come out of this uh, into the 10.20 to 10.40 a.m. time frame this morning is going to be very important. So, so far, a lot of very good positives. Now, I just wanted to show you as we're coming into this section here, look, you've got wheat. This is going to the, uh, the grains. The grains are failing. Look, this dreaded H pattern in the weekly is taking out the left side low. So there is some deflationary aspect that we've got to consider. Uh, look at the soybeans. Soybeans uh, running nicely. This is the one that's actually act acting quite well. It's in legs uh, peak C right now in the daily chart, making this cup formation. The technicals are good at 1389. It should attempt to get to the 1410 area, and then we'll have to see what happens. Uh, talking about the grains, look at the uh, corn. Uh, corn is trading. This is like wheat. It's down in the lower area. And as I say, uh, we're going to be watching this closely because if there is a deflationary aspect in the DBA, which is the agriculture fund, which we, we've had for years now, um, it's kind of stalling. It's had a really good bounce, but it hasn't broken down, but it also includes sugar. So let me go to the sugar contract here. Sugar contract is holding really well, going back to peak C1, C2, C3, even a C4 in the weekly charts. So sugar is the, in, the, in the DBA. That's what's holding very, very well. So I'm going to just see here. I want to check. I don't want to overdo this because I'm doing this on telephone, and I'll have to try to find my microphone uh, in a moment. Well, it's actually the earphone that I've got to hear. Uh, so, okay, I've got another couple of, couple of seconds to the break. Let's do this as we're going to go to the break. I want you to look at the um, SMHs, that's the Semiconductor Index. Remember, I like to think that where the semis go, the market goes. Summer's rallies very nicely. It's in the mid-range. But I think that, in fact, uh, it's telling us that not everything is 100% right now. I'll be back in a minute. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 126, SMHs up 23. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back, Basil Chap, and, and let's go through this. Look, here's your peak G in a one minute chart, right, what was the high? 45.30, what were we looking for? 45.30.00 was the exact high, that's that trend line, and now we're pulling back. Is this a turn in the, in the, in the chart formation for the day? I don't know, but it's a leg E. It's going to be a peak E in the five-minute chart right here. Let's go to that. There's your E. Ah, oh, this is exciting. And uh, now the Dow's only up 94, S&P's up 16. If there is going to be a change, and I discuss, I showed this to uh, my subscribers, um, it's how the market acts and after 1.30 this afternoon, if at any point the Dow actually goes negative, that'll suggest that this was really just a one-off, a rally, and there's still to be a digestive phase. If, in fact, we come back and we close very sharply, and then tomorrow will be the end of the month. Uh, tomorrow's a Wednesday, the, uh, yep, Wednesday the 30, uh, Thursday the 31st. Um, how are we coming to Friday? is going to be very important, at least for me, for the information that I want. I, we are still short the Dow from the exact high on August the 1st. We're still short the SMHs from a day and a half after their, their top. And I don't yet have evidence that this is a sustainable, not, not that it isn't a really good, a fabulous actually bounce, more than a bounce maybe, but I don't have the evidence yet that this is something that I have to say is the low and now it's up, up and away. And there are a couple of reasons that I'm saying that. I would expect that in this particular phase, if there's going to be a major move to the upside, that you would actually get the, you would, you would start to see that the whole AI area and the battery, you'd start to see some kind of speculation attempt, but we're not even seeing that just yet. And that just says to me, 
Uh, Jimmy, congratulations. Short at 45.26. Um, I'm not saying that's perfect. I'm just saying that was really a good a good turnaround. Look at those two doji candles and then a big red candle. And I was on the air and I had all my hands full and said I was going to grab a short right there. As it turned pink, that would have been at 45.34. Um, well, as a, uh, 34, would that have been 34? Sorry, 20, 20, uh, 25 to 24. Um, so in the meantime, back at the ranch, you've got a peak G in the one-minute chart. You've got a peak E in the Chapman wave in the five-minute chart. You've got a leg D, and if this bar, this 10-minute bar concludes, it's going to go to uh, a peak D. But here, the 9 and 14 period moving averages are still very strong, both in the uh, 5 minutes and the 10 minutes. So it's, it's a work in progress. Now, talking about that, I had uh, a couple of things go on that I wanted to talk about. I, I wrote them down. So NSC. NSC is, there we go, NSC is Norfolk Southern. So Nor Norfolk Southern, one of the great rail, rail companies uh, at various times, and then out of favor at other times, has been out of favor since that exact double top uh, at about 237. I'll give you the exact number. On the uh, 20th of July, 238.83 was the high, 239.00. Oh, oh, oh. Let me just do that again. 238. Point thirty is that eighty three or thirty three? Eighty three, and then on the twenty fourth it goes to two thirty nine zero zero, a round number high. Wow, two thirty nine round. Oops, make it a lowercase round number high. Type it with one hand, and. We plummet down to the dreaded H that goes to a lowercase h pattern at 209 right now. And th there are a whole bunch of reasons why I'm saying I don't think we're ready for prime time at this particular moment. I do believe we're going to see it, but I don't think we've quite finished the whole digestive phase that we were looking at before. Now, here, yeah, let's go to this. I want you to see if the dollar, I didn't, did I do the dollar? Maybe I forgot. So the dollar is down sharp, is down 44, text said 103. It made this top of this peak G slash C. Now, what's really important to me is that the UUP, the dollar is the key. UUP is merely the uh, the trading vehicle. The power shares DB US dollar bull made a, a double top right here in leg D. So let me explain. Remember, I was talking about the um, falling X formation, the one to one to the upside. That was the silver chart. Look at this. The um, the move in the UUP, the dollar, basically the dollar, right? This is what we are long since 2018. Has a spectacular move going up, stalls right at this trend line, Chapman Wave falling axe resistance. I usually put in a double line here just to show you that there could be a um, inside track repellent zone, and so there was. It pulled back sharply, and within three bars, it did the Chapman Wave instant restart, sneeze coming. That way I was able to block it, good. And from the low of that, I drew in a green line, a parallel. It's called Chapman Wave Parallel Extension that comes from the falling axe formation. And you should see a, the whole thing about this is that it goes in a parallel movement to the upside, in this case, or the downside, in the, in the same angle, almost the same number of bars, and that's where you're going to monitor it because at the end of it, in this case, it was at 29.09, and the high before was 29, uh, 28.32. So here we are. This is the turnaround. But here, look at that nine-period moving average, still way above the 14. That just says the dollar might pull back. But until this thing crosses negative, I'll have to go to this particular chart. I thought I was going to avoid it. That time was up. We were finished with this altogether. Uh, you can see the gold just today. I don't know if it's going to hold, but so far the nine is flipped out to positive. That's a good sign. But look at the dollar. Whoops. Look at the dollar. DXY. Look at the price. How sharply. But it's done that before. 
Look, it did it right here. It went way underneath, and it took quite a while before the nine-period moving average crossed negative in the Dow chart, uh, INDU. Look at this. The Dow made its high right there. That's August the 1st where we went short. But it took all the way until August the, the 16th to cross negative. And even now, it's gone above. But that pink nine-period moving average is saying to me, believe in your system. And when your system changes, then you can change. And all I can say is I have to stay with us. And that's the reason why in the SMHs, even though there was a fabulous move yesterday, and it actually went positive, I have to say that I need to see a fulfillment of a number of things before I can be convinced to take off our short position. Yeah, trading position, we've tried to have uh, very short-term uh, uh, moves to the upside. We've even got a position today that if the Dow pulls back, well, uh, basically if the, the, that index pulls back to a certain level, we might take a trading with a very tight stop, take, take a trading long for a bounce. I'll be right back. Dow's down, Dow's down one. S&P's up 72 cents. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
move on way back. Basil Trap, but now he's down. 20, and the S&P is up to, wow, that was a quick sell program. I think it, it looks to me, I don't know if it's news related, <clears throat> certainly it looks like a sell, if it is just a sell program, you can see some kind of a bounce coming back, yeah, for people to get back in line. Uh, I wanted to say, one of the techniques I discussed in my webinar, um, and that was last week, and the webinar is up for those who uh, in, in, want to archive it, um, is that I want you to show in that how often and how important 200-period moving averages are. You don't have to do anything with it. You just have it sitting there. Look at this. 200-period moving average became this incredible cushion between 4 o'clock this yesterday and overnight, in, and it was at this morning, 4 o'clock this morning, into when it lifted off. Uh, you can even go right to there at about 7.30. Where did it come back? Where did the price go to? Even though we hit round number 4530.00, we can't even see. You remember, I said keep trend lines and things in place and let them just, as you're approaching, so you'll see the sign uh, three quarters of a mile to Oak Street or whatever it is, right? So you now, on my chart, the one minute, you can't even see the, that uh, 4530 line. Why? Because we weigh under it. But what do you see? When you were at 4530, did you even think about the 200 period moving average at 4503? No, you didn't need to. Ha, look how that became an incredible support. So I always love to put these, these it's so easy in your software program. You just put it in. You just have it there when you need it. And now look, for the first time, it's a minute, ch- a five-minute chart. I can't talk about it as if it's done. I can just say, look, there's an S. That means that the nine-period moving average is attempting to go below the 14-period moving average. Isn't that interesting? All right, enough with that. I had a bunch of questions. Let me get to that. So the uh, first question was FCX. Um, FCX is... Uh, this is the Freeport McMoran, uh, Inc. Copper. It has uh, other minerals as well. So it makes a peak F top at about in the 44s, plummets down under the 200 period moving average, turns around as a nice spike, and what does it do? It stalls right at the 50 period moving average, but the technicals have improved enough for me to say that perhaps we are starting to form a pretty decent base between the 38s, that's at the 200 period moving average, and the 37.50 area. And 37s is where the low was back on the 6th of uh, July, 37.91, uh, 37.20, sorry. And that just says to me that copper is kind of in play, but it's really having a big digestive phase. So the question was, do I see it running back? All I can say is that the weekly chart is still very weak, even though it's green. And if this, if if Freeport McMoran starts to trade under, for two out of three sessions, trades under 38.70, there's a real good chance that that nine-period moving average will turn negative. As it stands right now, it says there's a modicum of strength in the weekly chart. Monthly chart is holding pretty well, not great. Next question I had was... Um, could you look at CDE? CDE is a silver stock. Um, you see, this is what I'm saying when I, when I talk about the bifurcation, even within a sector, how it could look fantastic, um, but in fact you've got just two or three stocks within that sector doing well, and the rest are really just not following CDEs in that category. So as a silver stock, uh, Cordeline, I I know what it's called now, it's called Cur Mining, um, I think it's okay, but what I this is not one that I would put uh, start a position in in the solar area. I, I think I'd rather go with something that's already shown that it's working. To me, that's much much more important. Uh, next question came in. Um, so hold off on CDE. Rather find another one. Uh, the, now there's. Um, let me just do this. Yes. So I just wanted to point out, because another question came in about UNG, that's the natural gas. So my opinion has been for quite some time that as a trade, I don't see it doing very much just yet. As a position play, looking out towards the end of September, beginning of October, 
I, I see a rally in natural gas, United States Natural Gas Fund, but I think you have to have patience. And I personally would rather, I haven't done it myself, I might be doing it for my subscribers, I don't know yet. I would rather be looking at, since it's trading at 703, I don't know what the options uh, prices are. I suspect that if you're looking at September, the third week of September, uh, that would be the, 15, the 15th of September. And here we are. No, I'd much rather go out to October. I'd pay a little bit more. Go out to October, a monthly one, the 20th of October. Then I'd be looking at the 7, and even if it's up at about a dollar forty, which is really very expensive, but let's just say it's there. I'd prefer to hold up and see if you can get it at the dollar twenty, the 7 strike, September, uh, October. And I would just sit with it. I'd say, you know what? I don't care what you do. But when it gets to the uh, 14th, now let's make it the 18th of October, I want you to be well in the money. I don't care what you do until then, but when you get the, but then well in the money means that it has to be um, at 8 point, say 50 or 8, 860 to be in the money and maybe even higher. It'll have to certainly be uh, up in that gap area. Um, well, it's, that's really, it has to, actually, it has to break to a new recovery high for you to be making money. That's, that's above 808, which was the high of the 9th of uh, August. But um, if you could get it under a dollar at any point in the next week, then I think you've got yourself something. So, yeah, Bob, that's, that's the only way I would, I would look at it right now. As a position play, if you're just prepared to hold it and say, look, I, I'm... How can United States Natural Gas Fund not be back at seven dollars and three cents at some point? And I'd say, look, that sideways range in the weekly chart, going sideways in a rectangle, long rectangle formation, says that particular, um, the whole series of moving averages, the nine and the fourteen, uh, just suggests very strongly that you should be able to touch it. You'll be able to get your money back at least. So that's the way I'm looking at it, kind of conservatively. Next question was uh, uranium, U, 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 U. Yeah, that's doing very nicely. But you remember we had discussed this. In it, I, the question came in uh, about a week or two ago. Would you prefer, uh, do you like U, 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 which is U, Energy Fuels Inc. or UEC? And I said we are in UEC as a position, as a, trying to have it as a longer-term position. Uh, we've got in the three uh, three sixties. Here it is at four thirty nine, and my target was four thirty, the left side high of the um, th the week of the third of Feb, and it's just today. I didn't expect it actually to do that, but today I think it was parallel highs. I wonder if it was because otherwise we've made a, we're making it up parallel highs. So this is F slash C, very good technicals. Mackie's flat. Um, uh, the MACD is very strong, stochastic spread at 94%, fabulous. On balance volume, it's getting a little bit toppy. Fabulous action. No, I prefer UEC. I have preferred in the sport. Dow's down 26, SP's up 4. We'll be right back. Basil Sharpen, Tiger Technicians out. Check them opening all day in the set up. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, folks, we're back. Right, so, Dow's down 17, <clears throat> SP is up uh, 6. So, what we're looking at here is Glaucos. Corporation of Thelmic Technology um, trading at uh, GKOS is a symbol trading at 76.11 of 50 cents. Um, so what's the wrong, what's the question? I took a small position in GKOS a little while back. I'm wondering if it's time to add to things. So Ron, this is what I would do. I, I, I love this kind of pattern, but at a certain point, and now the, poor, the, the, the point that is that in this kind of lopsided cup formation, now speed is of the essence. Because if it goes sideways a little longer, basically it'll say um, that 73 is going to be t tested, and if it's taken out, then the weekly starts to uh, dissipate the strength of the weekly. But the weekly so far is really good. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you. You took a little position. I wouldn't add to that position yet. It does look like it's making a cup formation, and the high that was made at 80.28 no, 80 on the 19th of July. <clears throat> it looks like that wants to be tested. If the MACD, which is just today turning positive, stochastics running nicely at 64%, on balance volume is running, it's not great. Relative strength is actually improving. Nine is flipped to positive. Um, I'm not going to say market conditions. This looks very much like it's in its own trajectory. Um, and as I see it, ophthalmic uh, technology, I thought I'd just throw that in. This is a gray leg B that we're looking at right now. I wouldn't add to it, but why don't you and I look at this? I, I actually notated this a while back because I think it was in Investor's Business Daily. Where's a pen? Where's a pen? I've got everything else. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to make a note of it, and today is Wednesday. I'll look at it. I mean, let's look at it again Friday, because if by Friday, today's up 53 cents. If by Friday it's nicely above the high that was made on the 16th of uh, 76.16, today it's already uh, hit 76.38, then the next high on the left side is on the 3rd of August, which is 76.96. So I would like it to go not stair step anymore, but this has to be an accelerated strong leg B, get that MACD nicely positive, stochastic will push to the 72% area from 64. All the other things will repeat, uh, will, will, will be enhanced. 
And that's really what you want to see because, look, it's a walking the nine-period moving average in the, uh, in the weekly charts. That's fabulous action. So I'm, I'm saying to you, stick with it. I wouldn't add to it right now. I'd rather add a little bit more on strength. I need to see the strength. I don't want to, if it pulls back, I'm not going to say add to it. But if it holds well and can get to 76, in fact, by tomorrow, if you see it hit 76.43, that's where you might want to add a little bit, just a little bit, and that could be your trading position. And the one that you just got into, the first one, is now your core, and this will be your trading position. And that will make it a really nice position to have because you've got a core, you've got a trading position, which will do the waves, PK, PB maybe, then a leg C, and that should get you really close to the 79 area, and that's really what you want. It's a long way to go in this environment, three points in an ophthalmic stock, but that's the way I'm looking at it. So uh, next thing we wanted to do was, uh, let's see. Yes, so that, I hope that helps you. Another question came in. Um, let's see. Okay, so I can't, I can't quite see that. Okay, a couple of things that I, I want you to do independently. Let me just show you. Look. VT, what is VT? This is a Vanguard total wool stock market ETF. It looks a little bit like, it's actually it actually looks more like the Dow than the S&P. Um, it's in a leg B. 109.30 was the high. It just reached 100.73 100 to PE in July the 31st. Ran down sharply. This is going to be your big tell because <clears throat> this is the world. Look. The nine-period moving average in the weekly chart is beautiful. Look at that. And the um, price went way under it. I love when you're doing the, if you're doing the futures and you're using my technique, when the price goes above or below the nine EMA, but the nine is still acting well, that means it's showing that it's still got, it's ignoring the weakness. It's showing that there's internal threat. So keep that in mind. So I love the fact that this is a world, a Vanguard total world return. Made an all-time high at 109. It's only 8%, or it was only 8%, or right now it's 8% of the, no, it was 8% when it hit 100.73. Now, of course, it's a little bit more, but um, that's really nice action when you think of that weekly chart. And look at this next one, WT, this is another one that I always follow, Vanguard. Look at this, the Wisdom Tree, <coughs> that was Vanguard, this is the Wisdom Tree, Wisdom tree. There. This is the wisdom tree, exchange traded funds, fixed income, currencies, commodities. <clears throat> Made an all time high. Whoops, let me just check that out. No. It made a recovery high. I remember as I said that I said, Whoops, this one had a fantastic in two thousand and fifteen. It hit twenty five ninety in February, I think it was of no March, March of twenty twenty it went to a dollar eighty seven. This is the <clears throat> Wisdom Tree Inc. exchange traded funds, etc. And here it is having a really nice monthly chart. Weekly charts making this cup formation. In fact it's almost like the uh, falling X right here. Look at that there's, there's your trend line. There's your trend line. Let me just place that a little bit better. <clears throat> G slash C very often goes to a D in a cup formation. So this will start leg B. Actually, I'm impressed. This is a really nice-looking chart. This will be at 727. I almost went long for subscribers the other day. I said, I don't know. It's a little too many. I don't quite fully understand it. Exchange-rated funds, fixed income, currencies, commodities. How does that work? Anyway, here it is at 727 on the 18th of August, and today's high is 726, two pennies away from starting a leg C. So... I mean, that's why I can't get overly bearish, and I've been emphasizing that my cell and s signal and cell modes are all in the daily charts. The weekly charts have been holding really well. So it's going to take a, a, something very, um, an econo a really big economic negative surprise to knock those weekly charts down very significantly. So this is what I need to do just as we're coming into this. Uh, we're up. Oh, now the Dow's. Positive. That's that's good. <clears throat> Let me just do this uh, at uh, yeah. Here we go. So this is the IAI. This is the 
investor broker dealer ETF. Um, a nice move up, but nothing great. And this is where I think I, I've been reading this book, uh, <clears throat> trying to read it actually, Fourth Turning. And uh, I've I, I got a lot to talk about in this particular uh, the fourth turning. You know, I always looked at things as sparsity and excessivity. Life and the market, that's how they go hand in hand. That's the reason why I'm saying the big coda phase won't be until people around the world, around the world, are trading from their desk, home, home laptops, trading markets all around the world. And we're not even close to that. I'll be back with that. Uh, we're up at all. Don't forget Tom's workshop is off a fantastic time for the gold workshop. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, hey, guys. We're back for the final segment. We're looking at the, the uh, E-mini is up 875. Look, it made that low right there. I love when you get almost a single move to the downside. Um, tiny little A over there, just a momentary attempt at a rally. It failed immediately, and then it goes to B. And look, it's almost like a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And then it says, the, the, look at this turnaround. How, how important is it? Look at this. Right there at that low, you get some of the indicators giving the exact low turnaround. And now we've got to a leg D. Remember the Chapman Wave? We're always looking at a bicycle upgraded to a bi mode to go to at least a D. Well, we've got that D. And that just says to me that uh, within the context of that sell-off, it was a 
news-related or, or program kind of trade that said, oh, that's perfect. And, but how did they know that 4530 was the exact high? I wonder where I can, I'm not going to go back. Well, maybe I can. Let me just see if I can squeeze it. No, I'll never do it. Um, but it goes back weeks. People remember in the den, we looked at 4530, 4530, and I, it, it suddenly came into sight. I said, what is that blue line? Oh, that blue line or gray-blue gray line is from that 4530 level. Now, look, there it is, 4530. And what was the high? 4530.00 and a pullback. So it's nice to see those things. Now look how it's walking the green nine-period moving average. Not very high, but it's, it's, it's certainly back to buying. And as I said, the speed with which you sold off says, there's residual strength. Don't think this is it, that it's all over, that we're going straight down. No, I think there'll be a balance, and then we're going to stall a little later on. So with that said, if the Dow is up over 60 points after 1.30 or 2 o'clock, it says there's enough strength for getting into the close of the month. Try to move it to move it higher. If it suddenly goes back under minus 40, then it says, nah, we're stalling right here. So with that said, uh, have a great rest of the day. Don't forget Tom's fantastic. It should be a fabulous webinar coming up this afternoon. And right here, back at the ranch, what I'm saying is, uh, watch the market closely. It's a bifurcated market. Some things are working really 